So right now, I'm gonna give you a second. Look to your left, look to your right, find your partner right now, okay? Does everybody have one partner? If it's three people, that's also okay. And one more thing, today we're going to have a group activity. And remember, the most important thing, you need to have a team name. And I, uh, I wrote this essay. How many paragraphs do you think this essay should have? Repeat after me. Close. Close. No. If you have some friends, good. If you don't have friends, it's time to start making friends now. You have a good opportunity. Some people say six, some people say seven, but I, I say roughly five. That's like my you know, classic number. Uh, and these are the essay types that we're going to be talking about today. Do you understand the task? Please raise your hand if you understand the task. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, that's my greatest pleasure to see you here in this moment, in a moment where we're all gathering, as I say all the time, with one purpose, to share and to gain knowledge. So today we have two master classes and one person is very, very familiar to me. Um, so that's gonna be, I can say, one of the greatest time ever you will ever have in your preparation for English, for the IELTS exam as well, because we have two great topics that's gonna help, that are gonna really help you to boost your vocabulary, to boost your skills in writing, and etc. cetera. So uh, before getting to details, I want first of all um, invite, invite first of all the head of uh, Ibrat Project, a person who made this event possible, Rustam Omarovic, on the stage for the opening speech. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you for giving me that opportunity to stand again in front of you and speak. Thanks God that uh, gave me the, another chance to live and to share the knowledge, the spread the knowledge. But I was surprised to see the seats free yet, but we've been doing the master class like nine or 10 time, right? Uh, once you finish, the seminars, I really want you to spread that because uh, the, well, I graduate uh, from the marketing and business management and this is where I've been taught, like uh, word of mouth is a free marketing tool where can you can use that one. So I really want you to uh, spread that to, uh, to ask someone to come with you, at least to do the good deeds because we have the greatest speakers and we've been trying to do to make your day as much as we can, as possible. And let me give that opportunity for two speakers today uh, to, to take advantage, full advantage of these days. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Rustam Akeh. Okay, now it is high time for me to invite our first speaker on the stage. And he's actually the second time being here, guys, which is already a sign off of what kind of great speaker he is. So he is himself a native speaker, and he's going to teach you how to write like a native in a natural way. So let's meet Alex with great applause. Hello everyone, uh, it is very nice to see you here. I am, as um, Asher Hobek said, I am here for the second time, and it is a great pleasure to be here and see all of you once again, ready to learn, ready to see new things. Uh, let's get two things out of the way right now first. Uh, there is going to be phone usage during the lecture, so you can use the phone, but I recommend instead of recording the whole lecture the whole time, try to listen. A lot of times you see like pictures, people during concerts, instead of listening to the music, they're listening to their telephones. So listen to me speaking, try to take in the information, and you can also take pictures of the slides. I have some good tips there. Uh, so yeah, today we are going to be talking about a couple different things, but basically the topic is top three writing tips. It's actually also kind of my methodology for writing, and we're going to get deep into that, but um, if you have like a, some paper with you right now, that's good. Paper and a pen, because we're gonna be, of course, writing. You cannot write in your head. 
you, you can try, but it won't work. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the next slide. Uh, yes, before we do begin, thank you so much to the Youth Affairs Agency for organizing this wonderful masterclass once again. Uh, it's, it's an amazing initiative, and seeing things like this always warms my heart to see people striving to learn. It is very important. Uh, thank you to Alisher Sadolayev, and thank you to Rustam Omarovic. You guys are awesome. So yeah, uh, let's get into it. Uh, next slide, please. First of all, let's do this. If you remember me from the last Ibrat Masterclass, raise your hand. If you remember me from the last Ibrat Masterclass. Okay, that's not as many people as I thought. Okay. If you know me from my Telegram channel, raise your hand. <laughs> nice. Cool, cool. That's good. That's good. Okay. Uh, last Masterclass was, um, I forgot the date. I think it was two months ago. So if you have taken your IELTS, between, uh, wait one sec, I'm not good at mathematics. January, February, March, April, May, June, July. What? Uh, July, yes. If you have, <laughs> sorry, if you've taken your IELTS between July and this month, raise your hand. Okay, if you are taking your IELTS this month, raise your hand. I see you, good luck, good luck. <laughs> okay, oh, there we go. Good, uh, yeah, let's go to the next slide. Oh no, the light. Uh, cool. So before we begin, let's play a little activity. In general, today we are going to be doing two things. Number one, you need a partner. Okay. You need somebody, like one person who you can talk to and you can discuss with. One person. You need to be the same level. Okay. So right now, I'm going to give you a second. Look to your left. Look to your right. Find your partner right now. Okay. Does everybody have one partner? If it's three people, that's also okay. And one more thing, today we are going to have a group activity. So you need to have a group of four to five people. If you have some friends, good. If you don't have friends, it's time to start making friends now. You have a good opportunity. Yeah. So uh, let's get into it. Let's play a game real quick. For this game, you need your partner. So if you have your partner right now, uh, look, look at them. This is the game we're going to play. It's called Two Truths, One Lie. Raise your hand if you've played Two Truths, One Lie. Okay, not bad, not bad, good. Uh, so the way this game works is like this. You need to take your telephone, okay? So right now is telephone time. Take out your telephone, and then I want you to write down three facts. Okay, write them down on your telephone. Uh, and then I want you to make sure that two of those facts are true. So like, for example, you know, I, I, I like to play football. I like to, no, 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 true facts. Not something boring. Don't say your age. Don't say like, I am a student. Something interesting, okay? Uh, so two facts should be true. One fact should be a... Good. Uh, yeah, so do that right now. I'm going to give you like a minute or two. So write down on your phone. Two true facts, one false fact. Right now. Write it down on your phone right now. When you are finished, look at me like this. And then I will know. Okay, I think most people are probably finished. Okay, raise your hand if you're finished with your three facts. If you wrote them down, raise your hand. Okay, I think that's most people. Perfect, let's do this. Uh, if you and your partner both wrote down all three of your facts, what I want you to do is read all three of your facts to your partner, and then your partner should guess which fact is false. Find out the lie. So let's get into it. You guys have, uh, I don't know, like two minutes for this. Let's go. Okay, so, did you finish? Say no if you didn't finish. Okay, that was, that was kind of quiet, so I think mainly you guys are finished. Okay, so, um, we're going to, oh, I remember you. Hi. Uh, anyway, yeah, let's, uh, let's move on to the next slide, please. These are my three facts, so let's do this. Uh, I'm going to read them out loud to you right now. Uh, yeah, number one, I once bicycled all the way to Angren, you know, bicycle, like, chuk, 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 and back. So there and back in one day. Fact number two, I once swam across the Churchik River. So, you know, like, chuk, chuk, you know, chuk, chuk, chuk. and fact number three, I am the best Tetris player in Uzbekistan. Okay, best, number one. These are my three facts. So what I want you to do right now is tell me, which fact do you think is false? This is about me. These are facts about me. So, like, with your hand, show me which fact you think is false. 
Okay, okay, wait, let's, let's do this a little bit different. Let's do this. Uh, I, will, I will say the fact, and if you think it's false, I want you to say no. Okay, ready? Okay, one. Okay, number two. Okay, number three. You, got, you guys don't believe I am the best Tetris player? Uh, let me tell you, I am. I am actually number one. I'm not joking, seriously. I'm not the only player also. There's other players. Believe, believe me, trust me. Uh, yeah, so number two is not true. I never swam across the Churchick River. I hate swimming. So yeah, good. What, what does that sound? Can you guys hear the sound? Is, that, is there a concert up there? Oh my, they're listening to Shorali Jurayev. Okay, uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, so, oh wait, back, go back one, go back one slide. Between the first and the second Ibrat masterclass that I held, I actually took my IELTS test. I took my IELTS test for the second time uh, and I got my results around, I think, like one and a half months ago. Uh, so today, of course, we are doing writing. So I want to tell you about me and my background with IELTS writing as a whole so that you know, you know who you're listening to. Uh, next slide. Uh, yeah, so first of all, my writing score in November 2020 was a writing seven. So I, I got seven for writing. Uh, let me tell you why. First of all, I, I didn't prepare for the test. Okay, I, I just, I took the test for fun. I didn't care too much. And so that's why my writing was seven. Uh, so after I retook the test, can you, can you guess what the score was? So I, I retook the test. Guess, guess what the score is right now. Just say the score. Okay, so now I imagine this, imagine. So I wake up, so all of your ideas are the same as my ideas, right? I wake up the morning when I get my results, right? And then I get my score. So my score was writing seven. <laughs> so guess how I felt? I, I was not very happy. But after this moment, I realized that even a native speaker can maybe not get the best results for IELTS because IELTS is not like a test of only your English. It's also a test of your test taking ability. You need to understand how to do the test. And so I decided it is time for self-improvement. I am going to learn. So what I did was I found an examiner in Britain, a real IELTS examiner. He's like, I think 50, he's really old, which means he's smart. That's how it works, I promise. And yeah, we are doing lessons with him. And the information that I'm going to tell you today is not from me writing seven, it's from an IELTS examiner, like a real guy who tests your essays. These are the tips that he gave me, and this is what we're gonna be going over today. Uh, let's get into it. But before we begin, before we begin, I do have to say one thing. Uh, my, my team are here today, I am starting an IELTS course this week, actually tomorrow is the first day. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can come up to my team anytime during today's uh, lecture. Please raise your hand. Lecture team. Yeah, there we go. One, two, three. Uh, this is my team. Come up to them and you could get a discount because you guys are here for about masterclass and I want to give you guys a cool discount. Anyway, yeah, uh, let's get into it. Next slide. Uh, real quick, this is my typing speed. Okay, I, I got a bad score, but I type pretty quickly. Uh, oh, pause real quick. Let me tell you. So the first thing, the first reason why I got writing seven. Right, the, fir the first thing. Um, this is my typing speed, right? 72 words per minute. Have you ever tested your typing speed on a computer? Raise your hand if yes. Okay, raise your hand if your typing speed is 30 or below. 30 words per minute or below. Okay, raise your hand if your typing speed is uh, 50 or below. Pretty good, pretty good. Raise your hand if your typing speed is 60 or below. Pretty good, pretty good. Raise your hand if it's 70 or above. Okay, not bad, good, there's three people. You guys, you, you guys know what it's like. So I type pretty quickly. Uh, and if we move on to the next slide, yeah, uh, we're gonna see this essay. So imagine this essay. This is actually the essay that I practiced with the night before my exam. I was practicing my writing because I am a very, you know, uh, punctual man. So I was practicing the night before my exam. And I, uh, I wrote this essay. How many paragraphs do you think this essay should have? I'm gonna give you a second. And you can show me with your hand. Show me with your hand. How many you think this should have? Not bad. Okay. Show me, show me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see, I want to see, I want to see. Okay. So the overwhelming majority of you is raising your hand. Did you say 10? Oh my, I can't, can't, can't believe it. Uh, yeah. The overwhelming majority of you is saying four. That is the correct amount of paragraphs. Now, if we look at the next slide, this is the, oh, this is the amount of paragraphs that I wrote. Yeah. And, you know, surprisingly, this is actually not a good thing. You know, my brain works in a pretty simple way. I think more words, better essay. That's not how it works. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, 
this is the first reason why I got a bad score. So tip number one, I guess, before we get into it, like tip zero, don't write too many words. 250 is the minimum. 280, 290 is like the, the maximum. This is how many you should actually write. 290 is like perfect. Uh, so yeah, next slide. Let's get into the tips, the technology, the skills. Uh, you should start taking a lot of pictures now because this is practical information. This is like what I teach during my lessons. This is like the information, you know? Uh, yeah, the first thing is, the first thing is, how do you get a low score for your writing? What is, what is the technology of getting a low score? What is, what is the skill? You need to not read the question. If you wanna get a low score, don't read the question. If you wanna get a good score, Read the question. You know, uh, let's, let's look at this, right, real quick. Your language skills may be good enough to earn you a band seven or eight. Not fully answering the question could reduce your score to a band six or even lower. Uh, this means that you need to completely answer the whole question. We're gonna do some practice for this. Uh, don't fall asleep yet. We're gonna be doing a lot of practical things. Uh, here are the three things you need to know. Number one, topic words. Number two, other keywords. And number three, instruction words. These are the words that you should be paying attention to whenever you are writing your essay and whenever you begin your planning. We're gonna, we're gonna break this down after a second. Let's, let's get into it, next slide. So these are the topic words. Let's, let's read this together. Uh, students perform better in school when they're rewarded rather than punished. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Nya, 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 nya. Uh, yes, raise your hand if you understand this question. Okay, perfect, I can, I can see most people. Uh, now tell me, just say it like all together. What is the topic of this question on three? One, two, three. Okay, I, I, I'm not hearing you guys. What is the topic? One, two, three. Okay, just say your ideas, I can hear all of you. I have very good ears, I promise. Okay, uh, so yeah, schooling, education, students, I heard someone say this. Uh, overall, the topic can be summarized as, I guess, education, right, school. Uh, yeah, now let's take a look at some topics that are going to be presented on your IELTS test. This is basically a list of the most like common topics. Next slide. Uh, yeah, you can see here, health, environment, education, development, globalization, public transport, criminal justice, youth crime. Youth crime, I am a youth criminal. Uh, and government spending. So these are the most common uh, commonly appearing topics on your IELTS test. You should learn topic vocabulary for these. That's kind of a thing. Uh, yes. So let's move on to the next slide. We're going to see that these are the other keywords. If the words that we looked at at the beginning are like the topic, the general topic, these words tell us exactly what the essay is going to be about. You need to make sure to pay attention very, very carefully to words like better, rather than, I guess, uh, when, something, something. These kinds of words are what tell you the topic of the essay. So if we move on to the next slide, you should take a picture of these. These are the keywords that you need to be paying attention to. Sorry I'm making you take so many pictures. Uh, this presentation will actually be available later uh, at a certain place, so you don't have to take like every single picture. I, I will tell you. Anyway, uh, yes. These are the keywords that tell you the exact topic. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. Lastly, these are the instruction words. This is basically your question. And does anybody have any ideas? What does this actually tell you? Uh, oh, oh, who said type of essay? Raise your hand. Who said type of essay? Perfect, there we go, great. Uh, yeah, it tells you what to write, of course, but also it tells you the type of essay. Let's do this real quick. Uh, some of you guys know, some of you maybe don't know. Raise your hand. How many essay types are there? Raise your hand. I wanna see everybody's hands right now. How many essay types do you know? Okay, 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 okay. Whoa, that's a lot. Okay, okay, good, yeah. Uh, so roughly five. Some people say six, some people say seven, but I, I say roughly five, that's like my you know, classic number. Uh, and these are the essay types that we're gonna be talking about today, preparing for today, uh, and, and learning today. Yeah, here, here you can see them, yeah. Uh, the essay types go like this. Opinion, double question, discussion, advantage, disadvantage, uh, and problem solution. The reason why they're organized like this is not because I thought it looked pretty, even though I do think it looks very pretty. The reason why it's organized like this is because the first two are mainly focused on your opinion. They're mainly focused on what you think, they're focused on what kind of information you know, and they encourage personal examples. 
The second two essays are mainly focused on what you think about some kind of topic. So for example, you know, uh, what kind of problems do cars have and how can we solve these problems? It's not necessarily your personal examples about cars, it's about general. So the last two are more general, the first two are more uh, about you, they're more personal, and the one in the middle is, of course, in the middle. You have to do what? So maybe you guys know, discussion. What is the instruction words for the discussion type of question? Do you know? Instruction words. Okay, can someone say it louder? I, I, I heard you say it. Do you want to say it louder? That was a loud voice. Good, great job. Discuss both views and give your opinion. So here you have two main tasks. Discuss both views and... Perfect. Remember, these two tasks should never interact. The way that you write a bad essay is by mixing all of this. So it's like you have one and two opinion in the first paragraph, your opinion in the third paragraph, no, 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 and there's no structure, there's no logic. That is how you write a bad essay. We're gonna, we're gonna get more in depth about this, but yeah. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. So these are the instruction words that you're gonna see for opinion type questions. What is your opinion? Do you agree or disagree? To what extent do you agree or disagree? Keep in mind that all three of these mean the same exact thing. So if it says to what extent do you agree or disagree, that doesn't mean you should change your structures. Next slide. This is an example question. Uh, we're going to be going back to this question. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can take a picture of it now, but this is going to be useful for you later. Let's read it together. Space exploration is much too expensive and the money should be spent on more important things. What is your opinion? Uh, yeah, next slide. Double question. So for this type of question, the only instruction words that you're going to see are two questions that are topic related. So there's no phrase that you can like see to understand what you need to write. It's just going to be two questions about some kind of topic. That's it. That's all you need to know. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, success is often measured by wealth and material possessions. So money. Uh, do you think wealth is the best measure of success? What makes a successful person? So again, these. Two questions are topic related. There's no like words that you can see. Uh, keep in mind, keep in mind real quick, these two questions should not connect. They should not interact. One paragraph, you answer one question. Second paragraph, you answer the second question. Simple, don't make them connect. Next paragraph, uh, next slide. Discuss both views and give your opinion. Discussion, simple. Some people think that the government should provide free education at every level. However, some people say that individuals should pay for their university education. Discuss both views and give your opinion. Classic discussion type question. Uh, we're gonna be seeing more of this quite soon. I'm just introducing you to our new friends. These are our new friends. Next slide. Advantage, disadvantage. Uh, the two questions that you're gonna be seeing are, what are the advantages and disadvantages of blank, some kind of topic, and do you think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? The answer is always yes. I think so. Uh, yeah, next slide. Space exploration costs taxpayers an exorbitant amount of money each year. Do you guys know what the word exorbitant means? Somebody wanna say it louder? Again? Okay, I heard someone say ex expensive. Uh, exorbitant means very large amount of money, usually, too high. Uh, do you guys know any synonyms for this word? Good, excessive, what word did you say? Can you say it louder? Significant, okay, that's a good word. Uh, do you guys know any phrasal words, like phrases or phrasal verbs that fit this place? as a synonym. Ah, oh, oh, yeah, there we go. Perfect. Rip off. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, next slide. Lastly, our problem and solution type essays. What are the causes of this problem? What solutions can you suggest? Uh, whatever kind of variation, like, you know, uh, what problems does this cause or what solutions can you think of? All of this is exactly the same. They just want you to think about problems and they want you to think about solutions. That's it. Uh, Overpopulation in many urban centers around the world is a major problem. What are the causes of this? How can this problem be solved? Uh, yeah, so that's it. We're finished with this segment. Let's move on to the next slide. All right, so real quick. Let's discuss, uh, this, this, this slide is blank on purpose. There's a reason why this slide is blank. We're gonna do a little bit of interaction. So, uh, why do you think it is important to know your question type? I'm going to be going down and I'm going to be asking you and I'm going to be giving you the microphone. So I want you to tell me your ideas. Why do you think essay type is important? What are the reasons for this? So let's go, let's go. If you want to raise your hand and give your ideas, anybody have any ideas? Why is essay type important? Why do you need to know what kind of essay you're writing? 
Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, anyone else? Any ideas? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. If if you want to talk. Okay, cool. Let's go. Dee, 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 dee. Okay, uh, ma'am over there. Do you want to come over here? If you want to talk, come, come, come. Perfect. Come. Should I throw it. <laughs> That's a great idea. Thank you. Okay, here. Uh, can you pass this along? Pass this. Not being uh, out of topic, it's the really vital to know the type of essay. Uh, it's the first thing. And the second thing, not mix the ideas. Uh, in order to know the type of essay, we have to know this kind of type of essay. So it's my idea. Very good. Awesome. Thank you very much. Great ideas. OK, somebody else. Uh, there's a lady there in the back. OK, I'm going to go around. OK, you two are going to be the last people. Give me a second. Wait, I'm going to run around. This is my exercise for the whole week, guys. Get ready. Oh, yeah. Our essay will be measured by task response, coherence and cohesion vocabulary, and grammatical accuracy. So uh, the type of the essay is really important in order to get high score from task response. So firstly, we have to pay attention to the type of the essay. Then we should um, begin writing the essay. OK, time for sports. All right, awesome, yeah. Uh, of course, task response has been mentioned, I think, like two times. It is one of the four marking criteria, which means if you do not have task response, you do not have a good essay. Uh, let's take a look at some examples next. Yeah. So uh, first of all, every single essay type will have different structures. You need to have different information. And in order to have different kinds of information, you need to have a different structure, as you guys said. Next slide. You need to have different approaches. Of course, the information is going to be different. And because of this, uh, the structure also needs to change. Hello, Shokhobek. How are you doing? Did you, get, did you get the paper? He got the paper. Guys, let's give a round of applause. Yes. Good job, Shokhobek. Yeah, there we go. We were, we were looking for paper. It's very important. You're going you're gonna to see it later. Anyway, perfect. Next slide. Uh, of course, the essays are sometimes going to be different length. Uh, a lot of teachers actually recommend a five essay structure for discussion essays. Uh, I'm not sure whether we have time for that today, but but yes, uh, there's sometimes different lengths for your essays. Next slide. Next slide, please, ma'am, please. I beg you. Oh, perfect. Uh, yes, there are variations for the introductions. The introduction is going to have a different structure, and you're going to be including different information depending on what is actually in your essay. Next slide. Uh, one more thing is opinion or no opinion. Not every single essay requires you to say, I believe that. Not, not all of them care about you. I'm sorry, but IELTS doesn't always care about you. Maybe you didn't know this, but they don't. They're very mean people. Uh, yes, and I think last one. Uh, see that transition? Plan differently. You need to plan differently according to what question type you have. Uh, and this is actually going to be a beautiful transition. I'm, I'm such a good transition person. Next slide. Plan. Tip number two. So uh, this is what we're going to be doing right now. Uh, we're going to be brainstorming. So plan pertains to several things. Once we have finished analyzing our question, once we have understood exactly what the question is about, uh, we are going to be uh, we're going to be, we're going to be what? We're going to be thinking of ideas. So let's do this. Um, three tips. Number one, you brainstorm, which means you think as quickly as possible. Even if you don't think your idea is good, write it down anyway, because it's going to be very helpful. It doesn't matter like what the idea is. Number one, number two, you have to think about ideas for both sides. This is important. If you only write ideas for one side, your opinion is going to be not as, you know, 3D, three dimensional. It's going to be like blank. Uh, and last thing, you need to choose the side that fits the best. This is, of course, your opinion. Anyway, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, oh, one second. Okay, so right now we're going to do an exercise to see how these ideas work. So if you go on Telegram right now, get out your phones, uh, go over there. I'm going to send an activity. We're going to be doing this right now. So open your telephones and give me one second. One second. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, so raise your hand if you see the question that I sent into the group. Open your telegram right now. We're doing an activity. If you see the question that I sent into the group, please raise your hand. Alex Native IELTS. I'm going to give you guys one more second to open your telegram. OK. You guys see it? See the question? OK. All right, so I'm going to send the essay after one second. OK, do you guys see the essay? Yes, no, yes. You see it? 
perfect. So this is what we're going to be doing. I want you to read this essay right now, read the whole essay. And what I want you to do is I want you to think about the main ideas of the essay. This shouldn't take too long. All you need to do is you need to analyze what are the opinions, right? So for example, uh, if we look at this, uh, first of all, the question is, a big salary is much more important than job satisfaction. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, so what we need to do is we need to go through the first paragraph and then the second paragraph, uh, sorry, not the first, the second and the third paragraph, uh, we need to read them and we need to figure out what are they actually saying? What are they talking about? After you're finished, write down your idea using keywords, only the main topics, and I want you to send your ideas into the discussion of the, uh, of the post, okay? So the discussion of the essay, right here. So send, send your uh, like opinion of the topics uh, and ideas in this chat right here. We're going to be discussing and we're going to be seeing what is this essay really about. By the way, this essay was written by me. So I'm going to give you guys, I think, around maybe four minutes for this. Uh, if you don't have your telegram and you're taking pictures of me, you should have your telegram right now so you can do some reading. Uh, it'll, it'll be helpful for you. Remember, once you're finished writing down your ideas, feel free to send them into the chat and we're going to be discussing right now. So I will read your ideas and the things that you write. Please try to write both ideas in the same message. So write uh, idea one, idea two in the same message so that I can see everything more comfortably. Okay? Idea one, idea two in one message. Remember, you're not writing your own ideas, even though those are also important. Right now, we are analyzing the essay. So you are reading the essay, and you are looking for the ideas in the essay itself. Not your own ideas, but the, es the ideas in the essay. Understand? Yeah, yeah, chundim. Okay, so the time is finished. Let me read a couple of the examples that I thought were good. Uh, in general, great job for doing this. It is very important to understand two things, right? You can write your idea completely. You can have like all of the words, all the vocabulary, but if you don't have the complete understanding of what you're actually writing, it doesn't matter how many you know cool words you use. You need to completely understand your ideas in order to ex express them well. So let me read some examples. Uh, number one, idea one. Uh, this is written by M with a line. Idea one, even though you can enjoy doing your lovely job, it might not be lucrative. Idea number two, having an exorbitant salary provides you a lot of things. Idea number one, job satisfaction cannot bring necessary funds. Idea number two, having a high income gives great status. So in general, this, this essay was about those two main things. It's perfect. We have a team. Okay. Uh, so here is the next thing. This is where we, blah, 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 blah. This is what we're going to be doing. Together with your partner, I want you to choose one of these essay types. So, uh, sorry, not essay types, but one of these essays. And I want you to write your main ideas together. Uh, by doing this together, you have a chance to talk with another person and you have a chance to completely think through all of your ideas, okay? So working together, discuss the problems and the solutions, okay? Th these three are all problem-solution type essays. So again, I want you to discuss with your partner and write down your ideas. After this, I want you to send this into the chat. We're going to be also discussing this, having some, uh, having some conversations about this. So, yeah. Uh, you can do it in the same chat. So here, still uh, in this essay at the bottom, okay? So choose one of these, any one that you like, and I want you to write, number one, the number of the essay. So for example, like essay one, essay two, essay three, and I want you to write your ideas. So paragraph one, paragraph two. Everybody understands? Raise your hand if you understand. Okay, uh, that's not too many hands, but okay, that's fine. Thank you. All right. So yes, do this right now with your partner. Remember, you have a partner, yes? Okay. You have six minutes for this. Okay, once again, raise your hand if you have a partner. If you have a partner, I see some people who don't have partners. Raise your hand if you have a partner. Everybody, please raise your hand if you have a partner. Keep it raised. I want to see everybody's hands. Raise your hand if you have a partner. Ma'am, no partner, okay. Gentlemen, you have a partner? Yes, maybe no. Okay, uh, you can put your hands down. Listen, doing this is very important because later we're going to be doing a game and we're going to be doing something similar, but in a team. So together with your partner, start working right now. Okay, we're going to be doing this as a team later. So you need to get ready to do this right now. So yeah, uh, again, choose one of the topics and write down your main ideas. Only the main ideas like, you know, pro or con, whatever you agree with. 
You guys have two and a half minutes. Remember to write down your ideas. Great job to everybody participating. All right, everybody, your time is almost finished. Raise your hand if you already submitted your ideas. Raise your hand. Great, great. I see some raised hands. That's good. There we go. Good, good. Very nice. Uh, it's a very good idea to plan ahead of the essay. Just so you know, the recommended amount of time to plan is around five minutes. At the beginning of your task two, you have five minutes just to write down as many ideas as you can, all of the topics, everything. So it's a very important step. Uh, okay, real quick, let's let's read let's read some of your comments. Okay, I think a lot of people chose the second question. Let me, let me read this. Many opportunities. This is written by Dildora. Many opportunities for people to study work and uh, to study work and live creating the same opportunities and living chances in suburbs. Uh, I think that's not the second one. That's the first question. Good. Uh, Marjona, negative impacts are a waste of time. This is the second one. It is harmful for health, especially for the eyes and the brain, causing laziness and affecting badly to your studies. Uh, and what can be done? To decrease this, parents or teachers must control their children. They must be taught to use computers for necessary purposes, to spend time on computer effectively enough. All right, very nice. Um, let's see if there's somebody for the third question. Raise your hand if you chose the third question. Ah, good job. Okay, there's like two people. <laughs> so number three, why is this the case? Uh, there's things that even human beings can't do. There's still some diseases that can't be cured. So, cool. Uh, all right. Good. All right. So, uh, everybody, come back to me. Stop paying attention to your phones. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good job. Okay. So, uh, did you write down your ideas, at least for one of the topics? Raise your hand if you wrote down your ideas. Perfect. I think, I think most people did. If you at least discussed, that's already a very important step. So, after we have analyzed the question, after we have understood completely what is the topic, what are we actually supposed to write, the next step is, of course, to plan. So, the first step, let's, let's go, just go back to the first one. Uh, first step is we, uh, we what? What is the first step? Remember? There's one word, one word. Starts with the letter A. Analyze. The second step is what? Okay, discuss if you're with your friend. But if you're on the test by yourself, you cannot discuss. Okay, good. So the first step is analyze. The second one is plan. And let's move on to the third one. Organize. So let's say them all together. So let's go just on three. So step one. Step two. Step three. Perfect. Uh, this is kind of like my, my acronym. I don't, I don't have any cool names for it, but yes. Analyze, plan, organize. So after we have created all of our ideas, we need to have a logical order for them. Uh, this is specifically useful whenever you have more than one idea for each paragraph. But today we're going to be focusing mainly on like uh, other types of stuff, but, but yes. Anyway, first, consider logical uh, order of ideas. Think about what ideas and topics you can use to transition from one idea to the next. Does anybody know what is a transition? Maybe you want to want to tell us. Do you guys know what is a transition sentence? Transition. No, not not in not in Microsoft PPT. I mean like uh, during your essay. What is a transition sentence? You can raise your hand if you want to talk. Raise your hand if you want to talk into the microphone. Anybody? Any volunteers? Oh, uh, who where? Show me. Who? Raise your hand. I can't see. Am I blind? Oh, there we go. Ma'am, perfect. Yes. Now we have somebody else to do sports for me. He is a lot more fit. Um, I think the transition sentence, uh, it connects the two topics and kind of, like, it's a transition sentence. So it connects the two topics. For example, if uh, in the first sentence, something A and the second B, in the topic, uh, transition sentence, there's going to be A and B. So Perfect. Awesome. Very good. Let's have a round of applause. Great. Good job. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Exactly. A transition is indeed something that takes you from point A to point B. In order to have good coherence and cohesion for your essay, you need to have good transition sentences and you need to have a logical flow from the beginning of your essay to the end. And transitions are what do this for you. Uh, yes, uh, let's actually move on to the next slide. Here's an example. This is also a, uh, an essay that I wrote. And this is specifically, not transition sentences, but this is the ideas. This is the planning. So uh, let's, let's read the question together. Discipline is an ever-increasing problem in modern schools. Some people think that discipline should be the responsibility of teachers, while others think that this is the role of parents. And I did not write the question because the question is a discussion, so you know what that is. Uh, the topic is what? Any ideas? 
the topic. So the, the first type of keyword, the general topic. What is this essay about, generally? Education, perfect. Uh, education, children's behavior, I guess children, that can also be the topic. Yes, great. And uh, any ideas about what is the specific topic, the second type of keyword? Okay, responsibility, respect, discipline, I hear some good words, yes. Also you can say problem in modern schools, that's also a type of uh, thing, thing that can be. Keep in mind, even though it says problem in modern schools, this is not a problem solution type essay. Anyway, here are the ideas that I wrote. So paragraph one, teachers. Teachers have the tools to help children and provide results, uh, uh, sorry, teachers have the tools to help children and provide results with behavior. Can provide better results for children's behavior, oh, sorry, that's the same idea, same idea guys, sorry. Paragraph two, parents. Because children spend their time, spend their most of time uh, with their parents, also idols whose behavior children follow. This was copied from my chat, I forgot to edit, I apologize. Okay, uh, anyway, do you understand these ideas? Okay, uh, there is a flow between these ideas. I could explain these ideas kind of in speaking. That is how you can check whether your ideas make, a, make logical sense. Uh, because what is on the page is usually difficult to understand whether it's logical. But while you're speaking, it makes more sense. So let me kind of give an example. Discipline is a problem in modern schools. Uh, this is the, the planning for the essay. Sorry, that took a while. Uh, so these are the ideas. Let me kind of read this. There are several arguments for both. For example, Teachers should be responsible for discipline at schools because they have the tools to help children behave better, and this can provide results with their behavior. Parents can be held responsible for discipline at schools because children spend most of their time with their parents, and thus they follow the same behavioral patterns. So this is all of those four ideas that you saw in that other slide together in two sentences, right? So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be practicing this right now. Uh, okay, so here we were gonna do some paraphrasing. You can do some paraphrasing at home. I will actually send this presentation into my channel so you can see it later. Yes, so we're gonna do an activity. Did you guys find a team for yourself? Yes, raise your hand if you found a team. Your team needs to have at least four and maximum five people or maximum six. So you need to get a team right now. I'm gonna give you a couple seconds, find a team. You can have like two and two, or you can have three and two, as many as, as many as you want. You need to have a team. Get a team right now. Are you in the process of getting a team? It's a little bit awkward, okay? Talking to new people can be hard. I know, it's also hard for me. Let's do this. Once you have your team, once you figured out who is on your team, do like a little introduction. You know, hi, my name is Alex. I go to school, I'm five years old. Do a little introduction, talk to each other, you know, whatever, uh, and then we're going to start. So I'm going to give you a couple seconds. Talk to your team. Talk to the people on your team. Your name, who you are, etc. Go. Okay, good. Uh, I think most people have began organizing their teams. We're going to do a competition of this topic right here. So together with your team, I want you to, number one, I want you to create a team name. This is very important. You cannot just say like, you know, we are team number one. Think of an interesting team name. Make it something in English. Make it like a joke. Don't make it anything vulgar, please. No swearing words. No swearing. Uh, yeah, make it like a, like a cool team name. And then here's what I want you guys to do. Is everybody listening to me? Can everybody hear me? Okay, good, good. Stop discussing for one second. I know that team names are very important, okay? Uh, but we, we need to get the topic right now. So here's the topic. Uh, as video games have been becoming more and more developed, they are becoming a form of art. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this view? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to plan your ideas. So as you have seen over the course of today, uh, we have been planning, which means we have been creating like two topics, three topics, things like that. You need to plan your ideas for the essay, and then you need to write an introduction. Okay, so together with your team, you need to write one introduction and at least two ideas. More ideas is better. Remember, maximum four. Maximum four ideas. So, at least two ideas and an introduction for this topic. Does everybody understand? Raise your hand if you understand. <laughs> Good. So, uh, we are going to have... One second, let me check. I think we're already a little bit... Is it okay if we're a little bit late? A little bit. Thank you so much. Okay, so, you guys have uh, six minutes for this. Try to make sure to include everybody from your team. You guys need to have at least four main ideas and you need to have an introduction. And remember, the most important thing, you need to have a team name. Good. So after this, you should write it in the, uh, in the channel. I will make a post. Okay, so you guys have five minutes. You may begin. Oh, sorry, six minutes.
Okay, there's about one minute left. If you are on your team, but you are not actively writing, here's something you can do. You can go on uh, Instagram, if you have an Instagram, and you can make a stories, and you can tag me saying Alex Native IELTS and send me a plus. And I will send you my top 10 tips for speaking, which was actually the topic of my previous lecture. If you were there, you already had them. If you were not at my previous lecture, you can get my speaking tips. I have speaking nine, so speaking is kind of like, you know, my, my expertise, my expert area. So yeah, if you're interested in my top 10 speaking tips, send me a plus on Instagram, Alex Native IELTS, and we have about 30 seconds left. So finish writing your essays, uh, sorry, your introductions and your topics, and then we're gonna be moving on. Okay, so uh, everybody, thank you all so much. Pause for a second. Okay, so everybody, everybody, uh, by the end of today, I will be making an announcement about the team that won and you guys are gonna get a special prize. We're gonna be going through. The winning team will get a bonus. I will message you, I will announce it and I want the winning team, all of you to come to me and I will be giving you a bonus. Uh, one more thing is, if you write Ebrot Start to Alex, 9 Alex, that's my account, or if you come to my team, you can get a 10% discount on my course. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I think that is about, next slide, next slide. That is about it for my uh, part of the lecture. We're also gonna be doing other stuff. Please, no matter how interesting it is to talk about video games as art, let's pay all of our attention to the next speaker who is Shohubek Olimov. Sir, are you ready? Let's give a round of applause. Thank you. And thank you all for participating. Thank you, thank you. Actually, you know, I was thinking about introducing myself Something like, right now, it's high time to invite the second speaker here, a person who has taught so far, 1,500 students, and a person with 1490 uh, SAT score, and 5 uh, IELTS band score. Let's meet Shohrobe Kyolimov, with grand applause. Okay, guys, um, let's get started then. Okay, today, today, what I can tell you for sure is that during this time, it's gonna be one of the funnest that you ever had, and, and we're gonna learn some great vocabulary together. We're gonna draw some pictures together. Are you good at drawing? Raise your hand if you're good at drawing. Make sure that you guys have them in your teams, because in the end, for the team who has the best drawing ever, will get the prize. It's a prize that's worth more than anything, that's worth more than money, more than attention, and care, okay? Then, let's get started. Okay, um, so before we get started, I would like to have some kind of icebreaker, and this is what I call one minute of perfection. So why do we do what we do? That's, I guess, to feel better about ourselves, right? You come here to gain knowledge because in the end, you want to get a higher score, let's say in IELTS, and you want to feel proud of yourself. And basically, this is the perfect version of you. So right now, I want you to forget about all of your downsides, about your laziness, maybe about your unattractiveness, or maybe about how, uh, I don't know, how, let's say, unhelpful you are. Just forget about them. Focus only on the good sides of you. Imagine your perfect version of yourself. And for one minute, please share your thoughts, share your imagination with the person next to you for one minute. Do you understand the task? Please raise your hand if you understand the task. Great, uh, great. So for one minute, you have to talk about the best version of yourself to your partner. Are you ready? Great, you may start now. After one minute, I will stop you and you'll exchange the roles. Um, guys, thank you, thank you. The time is up. Um, great. Now, after this icebreaker, let's get down to the main topic of our today's theme. So, Animals, that's gonna be about animals. So, uh, lady in the front, can you please ask me this question? Yeah, the first lady, there, yes, you. Can you ask me this question? I'll answer. What's the dead lion's animal in the world? Dead lion, what does it mean, who knows? Dangerous, nope, dead, what does it mean, dead? Dead, yeah, it's dead. If the, it, it starts with dead, then deadly as it means, animals that are disappearing, am I right? No, I'm not. Look, deadliest, it's a type of animal that is very, very, very dangerous, okay? It's an animal that can kill you, that can eat your flesh, and yeah, you're gonna be dead. So my answer for this is the deadliest animal for me in the world is, let me show you some pictures. 
Uh, spoiler alert, I got three mark at school from drawing. So this is the deadliest animal in the world for me. What's that? Is that fish? No, it's a shark. It's a white, big shark. Have you heard of the fact that they can smell your blood from kilometers away in the ocean? So imagine, you have a scratch on your hand. A blood is tipping from there. And then a shark is coming to you. If you are in water, of course, in the ocean, of course. Um, thank you. So um, please, sir, uh, sir, yeah, can you ask me the second question? Yes, you. What's the cutest animal in the world? What are they? Cats and? Dogs and? Rabbits, rabbits, thank you. Thank you, these are rabbits. Look at, look, look, look at how cute they are. I'll tell you one story, I'll tell you one story. Um, around four or five years ago, I was really ambitious. I wanted to make a lot of money and I was dumb as well. So I watched the film of Ajoy Paras. Have you watched it? Yes, I got to watch it and I learned from his mistakes and I decided to open up my own business. At that time, I had around 600,000 sums. And living in Teteze, in Merzolobek region, I went my way towards Parkent. Do you know how far it is? Like four or five hour away. So for my age, that was quite an adventurous um, embark of a journey. So I decided to go there. I bought one rabbit of like three months for 150,000 sums. Just imagine, at that time, the normal one used to cost for like 15,000 sums. It's like 10 times more. I want to have a, a, a rabbit of a great breed. And it was Kalifarnisk. So I bought them, I brought them, four of them I have, and I started raising them. So in two years, I had 70 of them. And they were so cute. Have you ever, have you ever raised rabbits? Please raise your hand. Have you ever had rabbits on your hand? Yes. Have you ever had rabbits that are 20 days old on your hand? 20 days old. These puffy ones, you know, whenever they are in your hand, you want to do it like... <laughs> that's very harsh, but that's very good. They're so cute, I'm telling you. So the thing here is that I wanted to make money, which I did not make any. The virus, the pandemic came in, and they are all... There, yes. And look, I was living in a house a simple house, not a flat. So which means that I had my own yard of ground. So what, what do you think I did with them? With the dead bodies? I dig up the earth and put them there. Yes, I was living in a house. Remember, I was dumb and young. And I did it, and I told you, I was lazy as well. So what do typical guys do when spring comes in? They dig up the earth again the next year. And I, are you imagining what happens next? So this is what happened to me, that bodies uh, was bringing up there. So yeah, anyways, that was a quite good experience. Um, next question. Uh, so please, uh, lady there, can you... Yeah, from there, from there, any person, any person. Can you ask me the third question? What do you think is the most needed skill for your part two? You all know how speaking test is structured, right? You have part one, part two, and part three. What do you need the most to get a really, really, really high score. Experience, okay, what else? Imagination is very, very important, of course. What else? You laid it back. Planning, of course, you have to be able to make the best use of your one minute because you have to have an organized answer, right? Persuading, you mean? Persuading, do you think that's important? Persuading the examiner? Um, not really, not really. Remember that in the speaking part two, the ideas, the ideas don't matter at all. It's more about the development of your ideas. So it doesn't really matter whether the examiner agrees with you or not. So what else? What do you think? Emotions are very, very important because this is basically what native speakers use. Look at Alex. Have you ever seen him being robotic? Never. Look at his eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, you see? So this is actually the type of skill that most native speakers have, and that is why they get a higher score than the other people. So what else do I need for that? Can you say that again, please, sir? Topic-related vocabulary. And look, there in the marking criteria section, it says, if you want to get a band seven in lexical resource, then you have to be able to use uncommon vocabulary. So who knows what uncommon vocabulary is? Idioms. Okay, let's say that, let's say that the examiner asks me a question. 
do you play football? And I'm like, one pig flies. Do you think that's a good answer? I used an idiom, I used an idiomatic language. Advanced vocabulary, great, thank you. Advanced vocabulary, and now listen. Um, the examiner asks me a question, where are you from? And then I answer, I, no, let's say, where do you live? And I answer, I inhabit in Tashkent. So raise your hand if you think that this will get me a higher score. I inhabit in Tashkent, why not? I'm saying inhabit. Have you ever seen like students using this word? Everyone says, I live, I live, I live, and that's very boring. I wanna stand out, so I'm using inhabit. What's the problem with it? Okay, so lady, let me ask you a question. I live in Tashkent. What do you say? Tashkent, yes. Have you heard any of them saying Man man? <laughs> Not a single one. This is actually how you sound to examiners when you try to employ these like you know great advanced vocabularies. You don't need to use them. Look, uncommon vocabulary it means a type of vocabulary that is commonly used among native speakers but that is not commonly used among students themselves. This is what you call an uncommon vocabulary. And let me give you, let me give you an example there. So, um, so, 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 what do we have here? Okay, the question is, how do you charge your phone? What's that? Look, plug in Zaretka Getkush. Who said that? Please raise your hand. Socket. Please raise your hand if you know the translation of the word socket. Two, three, four, five. Look, there are 200 people here, and only five people out of 200 know the word socket, which means razetka. But this is a word that you use on a daily basis. Now, do you see the reason why you're not getting the score that you really want to get? because you are not using the vocabulary that native speakers typically themselves use. These are the common words that you see on a daily basis. So right now, the point of saying all this information is that I want to teach you all this topic-related vocabulary on animals, and I want you to crush the topic of animals whenever it arises in your speaking test, okay? Let's go. Look, we're gonna do it in this way. I'm going to give you a definition of one word related to animals, and then you will have to tell me the exact word of it. So for example, I have what? What's that? Fingers, or this hole is arm, right? Okay, I have an arm, I have fingers here, but what about beers? On top of their fingers, what do they have? These long nails that are used to kill animals. Who said cl close? So, this is what you call, repeat after me, close. 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 No. Why are you saying close? It's class. Do you understand it? Class, one more time. Class, great. But what about, what about the lower part of, let's say, dog's legs part? Uh, how is that called? That soft one, you know? without nails, they walk on it. Dogs have them, cats have them. How do you call them? This is very similar to it. Sir, pose. You sure it's pose? Pose or pause? Pause, great job, super. Okay, I have teeth. What if, what if I have really, really sharp, long teeth, like those of snakes? How do I call them? It starts with F, who knows the word? Thanks, great job. Yes, it is a type of layer that is on top of animals and the thing that keeps them warm in winter. Let's say it's on sheep. What's that? It's also used for making dress as well. How is that? Fur, great job, great job. Fur, repeat after me, fur, fur. Why are you repeating after me? Fur, fur, fur. Great job, super. Now, next word is um, the type of skin that is on fish. You know this word, you know this word. What's that, what's that, tell me. Coins, who said coins? <laughs> That's coins, okay? No, coins is the money that you use for paying for something. 
But what? Who said that? Scales. Great job. Thank you. Scales. And yes, these are scales. And by the way, guys, uh, by the way, I forgot to mention that right now. Look, um, after, all, after learning all of these new words, then you are going to draw pictures based on them. So please, right now, open your phones, everyone, and jot down these words with their translations. Because the more you'll be able to use them, the higher score you will get in the end. So please, can you go back to the first picture? Go back to the first picture. Yes, claws. If you don't know them, write them, take a picture, anything. We're, we're, we're gonna go through that fast. But what about the metal that's inserted by humans on the lower part of horses' legs? These are used mainly for race horses, so that their you know, lower part of their leg will not drag on the ground. How is that called? It starts with H. Hoof, great job. That is what we call a hoof. How do you say that in Uzbek? Taka. Tuyok? Is that? No, it's not. Taka. Yes. Great. Then, it's again a part of body that's usually on top of hat of birds. Something that makes them really look unique and really, really beautiful. What's that? Kings also wear them when they get nominated for this official position. Crown. Great job. Next picture. It's a crown. Next word is something that you like, something that you should know if you are a lover of cats. What makes them really, really cute based on their face? What's that, like thin layers of hair sticking out of their mouth? How do you call them? This is also a name for food. Whiskers, great job, of these kind of insects. So the last word is, so the snake, how can it kill you? The snake, how can it kill you, with what? with poison, which means that the snake is poisonous, or the snake is, with a better word, it starts with we, there is also a feeling for that. Venomous, great job, use the word venomous instead of poisonous, that will get you a much higher score. Oh, uh, yes, this is the venomous, please go back. I forgot to mention that word, this is a horn. Two things on top of a bull's head, okay. Now, we have gone through all the great vocabulary that you can use for describing animals. And it's time for practice. And I don't like uh, practicing it you know, in a memorizing way. That's very boring. Let's make it more active. Right now, we specifically, with our team, made all the cards from the morning. Right now, we're going to distribute it for a group of three to four people. And the thing that you will have to do is to take your turns and give the definitions of the words. So guys, can you please spread the, the yeah. The words there. Um, one thing for like three to four people. I'm going to explain how to do that in a moment.